Uh, Euro step the other night. Now we have one of those floaters from 15 feet. So John Mooney has expanded his game by doing some creative things in the offensive end. Nate Lashesky entered the game for Jawan Durham. Back underneath the Bennett, who misses too strong off the backboard. And is that now going to be a different story with Lashesky underneath as opposed to Durham? It's up to the basket. Oh my goodness. He is just playing so well right now. And that's just a big time move by the point guard for the Notre Dame. Back to that point about Lashesky, though, is that going to change anything? Well, I think they're going to they switch John Mooney on to him to get a little bit more weight, but it's still going to be a load for John. Strong defending from Mooney. Marshall keeps it. And it's Kinsey who drives to the basket. What a great athlete. You know, that's all coach could talk about before the game is how great an athlete, this vertical jump. He says that he could be a young man down the road that will end up playing in the league. He's just six foot five and 185 pounds, but all kinds of talent for Kinsey. Mooney backs down, and it's a jump ball. Notre Dame up by nine over the Marshall Thundering Herd. TJ Gibbs has a pair. First miss three from the Irish from Mooney. Yeah, I think if you looked at that shot, that's probably not John's notable shot, fading away on a three. If he gets set, he's a much better shooter. Mooney made his first three of the game to put the Irish up three at the time. It gave Notre Dame a 7-4 lead. You know, as I talk to the staff and talk to the coaches about, you know, they've had great shots. They just haven't dropped. And that's been the thing that the Irish have waited on. These guys starting to hit consistent three-pointers. Oh, a terrific find underneath. Mooney fouled on the way up. Yeah, it was a great, great pass. Just drop it down there so the big guy can just catch it. Hopefully, you know, have an opportunity to score. He doesn't, but at least he's going to the free throw line. John Mooney has not yet made a free throw this season. He looks to change that as he steps to the line this time. It's off the front rim. You know, when you're looking at a pick and roll, this is just the basic basketball. You set a screen, you roll, and they make a switch big on small. John Mooney has a chance to knock in a shot. Well, that's his first free throw of the year. The Irish extend the advantage to 10. Jared West runs the point for the Thundering Herd. It's taken away by TJ Gibbs. Notre Dame looks to go in transition. Hub peels back. Mooney's got a three. Back rim. Irish had a great look there, great defense. Again, if you look at the herd, they're running a lot of NBA quick hitters. And I'm sure those came from younger brother. It's a moving pick call against Goran Miladinovic. But you can just see the feel of what they're trying to do offensively for the herd. They're running a lot of things that you see in an NBA game. Quick hitters because you don't have a shot clock that's as long as you have in college basketball. But I'm sure when the brothers get together in July and August when they meet, they spend time together, they X and O a lot. Is there a time limit you think that Marshall has? They want to get a shot up in, what, 10, 15 seconds, you think? Yes, they do. That's their goal. And as I talked to the staff before the game again, their big issue was, I don't know if we're going to get those shots off against the Irish defense. Something we saw from Robbie Carmody in the first two out-of-conference games especially, his willingness to drive to the basket and draw fouls, we saw it again right there. Oh, when he catches the ball, he's got one thing in mind, attack that rim. So, you know, that's exactly, he got his bell rung there, so he's going to have to sit down here and have the uh, trainer take a look at him. Let's take a look at this last play. Take your part, and that's Prentice Hub here live. Mismatch inside. Hub to the basket, drops it off for Lashesky, who's fouled on the way up. Good find. The Irish had a mismatch inside. They switched off, and again, it was just a great find by the guard to find the postman running his hands in the ball, looking for opportunity to get to the free throw line. Nate Lashesky to shoot two free throws. He's 60% so far from the line. Notre Dame as a team shoots 75%. The sophomore from Jupiter, Florida, nails the first free throw. And you know what? It's going to happen for him. Nate 
Leszewski. Leszewski has just done a great job of keep working on his game, keep continuing to do little things. Coach has been very happy with him rebounding and defending. Now eventually that game's going to slow down. He's going to start knocking in these shots. Leszewski, a big six foot ten, 225 pounds as he nails both free throws, and he can serve as that stretch five. Yes, absolutely. Again, the Irish switched on that screen. Fading away. Off from West, Leszewski grabs it and gives to Prentice Hub. The Irish look to go in transition. Hub pulls up the three, in and out. And I just like it. it. I like it, though. I like that they're pulling up and taking these shots. Coach has been on them about when you're open, take shots. And now tonight, you can see a different Irish mindset. Leszewski wide open. Well off. Yeah. So far, Tavian Kinsey has been shut down by yes, strong Notre Dame defense. He is one special athlete. Has just two points so far tonight, though. TJ Gibbs has done well to guard him. He really has. He's locked in right now. A long three ball from West. Just got back for that time. And a couple of bad misses yeah. in a row. I think right now, Coach Bray wants his team to run a half court offense here. They've kind of got in transition mode of shooting threes. They run, run the basketball, run their sets, run their motion offense, and get good looks. Dean Goodwin, who played very well in the game against Howard. That's TJ Gibbs who misfires. Goodwin on the rebound. Mid range jumper is good. Dean Goodwin had a terrific game against Howard. Yeah, that all took place by just a great tip out. You know, an assist should go to Nate Seski for doing a great job of finding the ball, tipping it out, and again, letting his teammate get a good look. Leszewski looks to drive. Blocked underneath, no foul. Goodwin, pump fake. It's TJ Gibbs who fires. He's got a three. I sense this young man building that confidence as they get ready down the road. December 4th, another ACC game. So in a the time, they're going to build this confidence here in the next few weeks. Notre Dame is playing outstanding defense here. Sharenitz throws it away. The Irish running away with it is TJ Gibbs, who just notched his third three of the game. Timeout to get the ball back inside in the paint. Iron Bennett has come back into the game for Marshall as the ball was intended for Durham, tipped out of bounds. Jerron Durham wearing a new jersey. He now wears number 25. Yeah, it must have had blood on that jersey that they couldn't get taken care of. So now he gets to wear a different number. TJ Gibbs fades away, wants three, it's in and out. That was a heat check shot there. When you're hitting them, coach will give you one of those off balance threes because you're feeling it. It looked good on the release, just didn't go in. Underneath, and it's taken away by Durham in the length. So important. Jogo had all kinds of space. Now drives to the basket and misses the dunk. He went emphatically, but couldn't put it in. And the layup from West is good on the other end. Wow, if he would have put that one down, this place roof would have went off. But, you know, that was unbelievable take. Strong take to the rim. <laughs> You just want to see more of that from a player yes. like Jogo. Yes, you do. Just more consistent. He's passed up a couple of threes early in this game, too. Gibbs on the take, in and out. Rebounded by Durham. The putbacks off the mark. And that presence yeah. underneath from Iron Bennett, also important. The drive and the finish for Marshall, who's all of a sudden Rattled off six in a row. Yeah, you know what you want your team to do as a coach, respond during a timeout. And here's a great situation. We attack the basket, get to the line. Strong move here. Gets through it, gets bumped, gets the ball high on the glass so it can't get blocked, and goes in. But this is what you want as a coach. You want your team to come out of a timeout, get solid, 
defensively, which they did, and then start playing solid Marshall basketball. Jared West leads Marshall with six points in the game. He averages 20 per game through the first two. Mooney fouled on the way up. Just a little things that John Mooney can do, and there's a great example. Set himself up with a little pump fake. Get that big guy up off the floor, get your body into him, and then get to the free throw line. Mooney's free throw is well short. You know, that's been something he's struggled with really his whole career, where he almost feels more comfortable from the three-point line than the free throw line. Second free throw off as well. He was the team leader in rebounds for the Irish, led the ACC in double-doubles last season, but the free throws have been a struggle for John Mooney. A three-ball is good. Marco Sharenis. You know, Coach talked about what they're making some transition from a really good perimeter team to trying to get the ball inside, but he's really happy with a bunch of underclassmen that can play this game extremely well. They just need to grow up. They're very similar to where the Irish were last year. And the drive from Prentice Hub is outstanding. This is just a completely different player we're seeing this season. Yeah. yeah. He's playing like a true college point guard. Where, yeah, here's a, just a great kick out look. And, you know, notice how deep that is. Uh, you can't guard that. I mean, you, that skipped all the way across the floor. By the time you get a hand up, it's too late. Oh, what a terrific crossover. Tipped out of bounds from Cam Brooks Harris. Brooks Harris has not started any of the three games for Marshall, but he's averaged 27 minutes a game. Yes, he gets that. That's a look at Sharenitz right there who nailed the three. As we look at Hubs, though, as a point guard, we just see that he's just, the game has slowed down. What I mean by that, your freshman year, everything's moving so fast. You're trying to score, you're trying to attack, trying to pass. Right now, it's all starting to come together for the Irish point guard. And just the sophomore. Oh, and the find underneath from Mooney. He does so many things well. He is a walking double-double, but he has this ability to find the open person and make the great pass. That's Cam Brooks Harris on the flush. Yep, yep. Moved his foot a little bit. Again, I think that going back here, what what uh, the Irish are trying to do, attack inside, and then look, you get a great dunk inside. And then here's a great pass where you don't have to do anything but catch it and dunk it. Wish I could have jumped that high. <laughs> Brooks Harris making it look easy. He holds the top of the key. Bennett bullying his way down low. Yes, boy, that's a low down low. That is a really tough, tough assignment because he's so strong and he's gifted. He's talented. He's athletic. Durham, oh, the pump fake to the basket. Just sets up his man so well. They know that he can shoot the three. So. You want to have other dimensions of your game, and John Mooney has got a great dimension because he sets people a pump fake and then goes to the hole. Two, three matchup zone. The fade away from Kinsey goes, and Marshall sticking with the Irish. Yes, they are. After, after that timeout, they've kind of settled in. They're getting better shots. They're taking care of the basketball. Great behind the back dribble underneath. Mooney receives some pressure. And Fluger throws the ball away. Notre Dame has had their lead cut to 10. Marshall with a run in the middle of the first half. And it's capped off with an alley-oop.
front. And a lot bigger. And he's planning to utilize games like this against non-conference games against teams like Notre Dame to solidify his conference schedule. Guys? Yeah, he's a smart coach. And what you've got to do at the mid-major level, you've got to win your conference tournament. So coach is just preparing his kids right now, building a building block, kind of building the chemistry, and then as these games progress, he'll get ready for conference. And then there's that's the ultimate. You want to win the conference tournament to get in the big dance. Cam Brooks Harris just knocked down a three. This Marshall team struggled against Toledo earlier in the week, lost by 25. As a thundering herd looks to come all the way back. But it's Kinsey off the mark, and the Irish look to run the floor. Mooney air balls a baby hook. Yeah, you know, as you look at the Irish, you know, they're, they're, they've been struggling inside, but then you look at what Marshall can do is step back three. And Coach is very optimistic about the future of his program. You know, he's a lot younger than he looks, and he says this game and these, this group of kids really keep him inspired to keep coaching at Marshall and seeing great things ahead for this team. The pick and roll. Bennett couldn't finish. But you could just see his force down low. Yes, he is one load and strong player. Three ball off the mark. Strong offensive board from Leszewski, but he's blocked. A year ago, he wouldn't have been able to get that rebound. Next year, he'll be able to finish that shot as he gets stronger. Brooks Harris wants another in and out. Yeah, that good look. A good look. TJ Gibbs wide open. Front rim. He's got another shot at it. Again, front rim. Notre Dame an offensive board, and John Mooney's off. And, and give Goodwin all the credit there. What a great effort. Notre Dame's players were upset they didn't get the call on that out of bounds. Yeah, look at the threes. work here. Great look, but then look at 2 3, knocking the ball out, getting his teammate. Look, he does it again. Boom. You know, those are like assists. Kinsey drives and throws it away. And that and turnovers have been a big problem for the herd yes. early in this game. They already have seven of them. Yeah, you know, as a young team, coaches have to be patient. And, you know, as I look at the Marshall bench, they know that they're going to have some unforced errors. And that's been shown here in this first half. But they keep battling, they keep playing. And, you know, the coaching staff said, we got to play through mistakes. Very similar to last year's Irish team. Seven turnovers for the Herd, just two for Notre Dame. Hub tries to dribble around a pick. That ball's tipped and taken away. Here's Kinsey looking to drive in transition. Foul on the way up. And all of a sudden, Marshall yeah. could cut this game to within five points. Now, here's something that the Irish have really struggled with this year, and it's going through times where they're not hitting threes. When they're not hitting threes, how are they going to score? you got to be able to score on the block or on the free throw line. And Coach Bray's trying to figure out how they can go without having five or six or seven possessions with an opportunity to score. Kinsey shoots upwards of 85% from the free throw line. And he's got an incredible vertical for the dunk contest this year. He jumped over four people. Taken away. And the finish from Cam Brooks Harris. It's a four-point game. And the Marshall thundering herd have yes. thundered back in this one. The Irish barely holding on at Purcell Pavilion. The thundering herd have gone on quite a run. They've cut the Irish lead to just four. 
It's a 12-2 run over the last four minutes and eight seconds for Marshall. Irish going to a 5-0 offense, allowing opportunities to drive. And again, I think you got to change up your offense. And so basically what I'm saying is the Irish are going without a post. Looking to attack more, drive more. I really think this is where the Irish had a lot of success against North Carolina. A player who's now out of the game, Iron Bennett. Yes. He was a force inside, a very big defensive threat for Marshall. Let's see if the Irish can capitalize on that. Goodwin pump fake and an air ball. Kept in by Mooney, the hustle play. Shot clock running down here. Just five to shoot. Gibbs drives, puts up a floater. No good. Marshall can cut it to one possession. Irish continue to struggle at the half court. Jared West. And Brooks Harris can't hang on to the handoff. The Irish hanging on to a four point lead over Marshall. Back after this. Those looks, they were burying him in transition, a kicks out. Now they're back to kind of second guessing the shots and also they're wishing it in rather than just shooting the ball. It's Notre Dame starting five with the exception of Goodwin out there in place of the big man, Jawan Durham. And it's John Mooney's baby hook that goes. Yes. You've got to go back to John Mooney. He's got to get touches in the offense. You know, we can't just settle. The Irish can't settle for threes. And thrown away, another turnover from the herd. That's their ninth of the game. Look at that turnover to yes. see That's, you know, and again, those are the things that Marshall program has not done in the past, but now they're younger and they're struggling a little bit, especially on the road at taking care of the basketball. Mooney looks to drive and he throws the pass to Fluger away. Mooney leads this fighting Irish team in scoring. He's got 10 points and three rebounds, but a couple of bad turnovers. Yeah, you know, coach is saying there, just catch the ball and shoot it. Don't put it on the floor and try to drive into trouble. Again, those are little things that could result in a turnover you got to clean up. Outside, Brooks Harris wants another, it's off. And it is Notre Dame basketball off the foot of Brooks Harris. I really like Brooks Harris, boy. He is really long, lanky, can shoot the ball. You know, he's going to be an outstanding player. He's a freshman, and you can just see down the road as he gets stronger, he is going to be an outstanding player. When he's been on the court, Marshall has outscored Notre Dame by 13 points. It's just so long. Great dribbling and some moves, but it's off the mark from Hub. Another missed three. West. In and out. Hub looks to move in transition. He's got Fluger wide open. Pops the three. Irish up nine. You want your senior to step up, you know, and there he had a great look. Knocked in a three, broke that ice. Tipped away by Goodwin. Goodwin's had his hands over the ball all night. Fluger. Off this time around, a foul underneath. You know, you really want somebody to step up and hit a three. And so what do you look to? You're going to look to your senior to kind of say, hey, I'm the guy. Give me the ball. And looky here, we have great pump fake. Step back. Bang. Just the second three of the season for Rex Fluger. But he nails it at a big point in the first half. Let's see if uh, John Mooney can cash in here at the free throw line where he struggled. One and one here from Mooney. He nails the front end. Yeah, that's a great release on that free throw. A lot of confidence. Look for the Irish maybe to pick up full court here. The Irish in the bonus. Marshall still quite far from it. Just three fouls 
for Notre Dame as the Irish open up the lead to 11. Yes, boy, the last three minutes has been back to more solid basketball by Notre Dame. Marshall goes with all basic perimeter players here the last two minutes because of foul trouble. Underneath, and it's a foul against Mooney. It's going to be a shooting foul, so Marshall will shoot two. Again, great ball screen action by the herd. A great look. Again, I said it before, but a lot of these looks you'll see in the NBA games. And I'm sure that this trickled over because of coach's career in the NBA. He's got to run a lot of sets that he's most familiar with. And so he goes back to what he does well, and that's uh, the NBA look. What a great career he's had. His thundering herd went on quite a run and have cut the Notre Dame deficit back to nine after a pair of three free throws from Jensen Williams. Notre Dame content to swing it along the outside. Great defense by the herd. Hub has a lane to the basket and loses control. It's off the herd, and Notre Dame will keep the basketball. They'll have just five seconds to shoot. See if the Irish have a quick hitter here against uh, sideline or out of bounds underneath the basket. Gibbs looks to drive. The reverse is in. That was an awesome take. Right to the rim, stretched out, reversed it, knocked in. Critical last minute here. Brooks Harris already has the team lead in points for Marshall, but it's West on the floater, not close. Great defense again for the Irish. Hub working quickly. Mooney lost control. This may be the last possession of the first half for Notre Dame. Mooney working down low on Jansen. The baby hook with the left hand. No good. Rebound. Goodwin. Putbacks also off. Again. And it looks like Notre Dame can now hold for the last shot. But again, 23, good one. Getting a loose ball, keeping it alive. Let's see if it cashes in for the Irish. Hubs got to get rid of it. Bluger puts up the three at the end of the half. Mooney can't get it on the putback. A terrific job by Marshall defensively at the end of the first half with that last possession. Yeah, I think that the you know both teams kind of settled in, but again the Irish had a last great three minutes. Some of the adjustments you the second half. Uh, no adjustments. We got to do better what we were doing. We got to get the ball into Iron. A big fellow, I thought pretty comfortable taking it in there. We got to close out better. We got to rebound better. We can do that. We got a chance. Thank you, Coach. No problem. Go hurt. You know, one of the things I just see is just uh, exactly what he talked about, getting the ball inside and, you know, getting off to a much better start this second half. You just see it in the vibes of the players of Marshall. They're playing a lot more confidence. The Fighting Irish also had a three ball, or I beg your pardon, the Herd had a three ball to respond early in the second half. You'd have to imagine Coach Tony's happy about that. I really like him. He is just a great guy. You know, he's got a lot of confidence in what he does. He's also patient because he knows his team's young. Rebound on the offensive end from Mooney. The putback's in. He is just so good around the basket because if people watch him, come to games and just watch John Mooney when his shot goes. He goes relentlessly to the rim. Jansen's three balls off. Jansen Williams, I beg your pardon. in. You know, people say, what makes him so good at rebounding? Well, he goes, look at him, he's getting position, and he gets his hands up big, keeps his ball, the ball in front of him. Even when he misses, he still has a chance to rebound his own shot. Yeah, a pair of rebounds and a pair of points. As John Mooney looks for a three ball. Well, we 17. highlighted him at halftime. 
and he's come out asserted himself here right away in the second half. 17 points for the senior forward. Jansen Williams on the floater to keep Marshall in it. Wow, that was a big time runner there. Great shot. Got another opportunity right here. Well, uh, Booney wants another. It's off the front rim. Let's see if Coach gets his team to get the ball back inside like he talked about during halftime. Williams off the mark again. T.J. Gibbs rips it free. Fluger looks to run with it. Oh, he's blocked. Yeah, what do you want to see the Irish do? Move the basketball. Don't let the ball stick. And that's kind of been the theme of Mike Bray's team. Get the ball moving. It will set up great shots. And there's a great result. Great ball movement by the Irish there. Running their offense and doing what they want to do. Keep the ball moving. Don't let it set steel. Mooney has 17 points tonight. Pair it with 10 rebounds. Jawan Durham, the mid-rangers, off the mark. Kinsey looks the drive, then an air ball on the runner. Kinsey's been a little cold tonight, not as much yes. of a factor as Marshall probably would have liked. Yeah, he's really kind of struggled. The game has been too quick for him tonight. He's an incredible athlete. He's trying to do a little bit too much right now. Not a single player for Marshall in double digits. West the closest, he has nine. Double stagger, low offense. Gibbs Great is defense. blocked. Strong block from Iron Bennett, but taken back. Hub to Durham. The alley -oop. We're playing a little spike ball there, right there. Wasn't it a spike ball with the ball bouncing around? People are tipping it, and then boom, it got spiked. <laughs> The Fighting Irish back up 11 with an emphatic jam from Jawan Durham. Everybody was jumping and tipping and doing a great job. Bennett off. He got the offensive board. Count it in the foul. Well, that's just a real strong move inside. Jawan Durham yeah, look at this, this tip. crowd. There's a, this is spike ball. Here we go. We got the ball moving around and then boom. What a save from T.J. Gibbs before the slam from Durham. Yes, just fun basketball right there. Durham normally wears 11, had to switch out jerseys early in this contest, now wearing 25. Let's not forget what this guy at the line's been doing, too. He is a load inside. 300 pounds. Yeah, and he's such a factor underneath. Yes, when he gets down low, and gets set, you're not going to get him out of the way. Bennett with eight points and four rebounds so far in this evening's contest. Now, he lost a lot of weight, correct? Yeah, so he came into Bennett, uh, came into Marshall, I should say, 380 pounds, officially listed as 299. So, you know, according to the Marshall website, he's lost more than 80 pounds. Yeah. 299 is a lot close to 300. I don't know how you decide if a guy <laughs> weighs 299 or 300. That's an awfully it's, good question. It's a lot. It's a lot. Actually, out of Durham, North Carolina. The Dukies didn't go after him. Instead, Marshall's got a big fella underneath. He couldn't put that one in. Well, he's worked himself by eating right, doing those things really very well. Mooney fouled on the way up. The Irish still lead 11. And it was Jawan Durham who's come through, energizing this Notre Dame crowd with the alley-oop. On the floor just makes it tough to defend and being able to get the ball inside. Now it's going to be a real challenge to see if the herd can adapt, because right now they basically are playing with five perimeter players, and they're all young. A stat that sort of illustrates how much of a presence he has on the floor. When Bennett's been in this game, Notre Dame and Marshall have been basically even on the score sheet. That's right, because they were able to get the ball inside to him. He could take it inside, kick it back out. But more importantly, he's been able to get the ball down low and knock in shots. I can't imagine he'll be out so long, even with the foul trouble. He has just three fouls. 
All five green jerseys are outside the three-point line until finally they get a post-up look. Underneath, the baby hook is good from Goran Milodinovic. Yes, and Coach was talking so much when he was watching him warm up before the game. He was smiling because he said, this young man's got incredible skill set. He just got to figure out the game. Milodinovic, seven-foot center from Tivat Montenegro. And he is definitely a primer-style player. And a bad pass from Fluger. Go to a backcourt violation. Yeah, when you're looking at a player inside out, especially someone of his size, being able to take the ball inside, you know, get inside, good strong move, look this turnaround, and nice touch off the glass. That is beautiful to see. And it's so hard to defend for a player like John oh, Mooney. Because he's got such great length on him. Tipped away, but it's a kickball. Marshall will keep possession. Mia Berry had an opportunity to be in the last couple of huddles. Let's see what she heard. Thank you, Austin. In that last huddle for Marshall, Coach D'Antoni really wanted to get Tavion Kinsey involved. Coming into this matchup, he averaged 16 points a game, second leading scorer for the Hurt. Tonight, he's been held in check, only five points, two for five shooting. The defense by Prentice, Herb has, Prentice Hub has really uh, slowed his offensive production. And for Mike Bray, he told his players, stop tipping the ball about around. We really need you to rebound. We can't give them second chance points. Guys. We talked a lot about tipping the basketball around, but Mike Bray urging his players not to. Well, you have to go up strong and get with two hands whenever you can. And that's something that, uh, especially at the defensive end, you got to go and rip it away from people. If you tip it around, now you're going to give opportunities for it your opponent to get easy shots on the offensive side of the ball. Mooney feeds away, that's off. And of course, Coach D'Antoni mentioned Kinsey, who's just been a little bit cold tonight. He, he has really not has. been as active as they would have liked. Tremendous athlete, but he just hasn't got settled in so far. Miladinovic off the mark. Marshall looks to run the floor. I beg your pardon, Notre Dame looks to run the floor. Underneath, Mooney. Working on Jansen Williams. Had a good look. Just didn't finish it. Jared West finds the lane to the bucket. First player in double digits for the Thundering Herd. Again, he's, he's the heart and soul of this team. He's a defensive player. There's a great example. Got his hand on the ball. Knocked it off the uh, leg. Of Hubs, and now they got the ball back in there, down to nine. Prentice Hub has been a little bit cold tonight. There's a look at that drive from Jared West. Just such great moves offensively. Well, he's just a tough, hard-nosed kid, and he is the heart and soul of this team. He's the leader on and off the floor. And you can just tell his presence on the floor really settles down the herd. Averages 20 points a game. So far in this young season, Kinsey. Brooks Harris back underneath the Kinsey. Now you see the athleticism, this young man. You know, he can get up. He's got an incredible vertical jump. He just throw it up by the rim. He found it. Didn't come down with it. Just finished it high and got an easy bucket. Carmody has looked to drive so far this season, but forced to kick it out. Leszewski's got trouble controlling it. It's taken away. The Herd looking to cut it to five. And the throwdown. Great, Jetson great. Jetson Williams. Yep, probably need a timeout here. Notre Dame calls a timeout. Marshall just within five. The thundering Herd have gone back. Notre Dame up. Man, keep the ball up. Don't bring it down because you bring it down, guards can strip, and that's exactly what happened. Then you saw defense creates great offense with an alley oop pass. Just great touch, great place to put it, and a great finish by the herd. Marshall with the momentum. Midway through the second half. Underneath, Durham is blocked. The 6 11 forward denied by the 6 foot 6, Cam Brooks Harris. And Brooks Harris is very long, though, and he got his hands up there and got his hands on the ball. 
backing down Kinsey. Again, I love that to try to get somebody started. Somebody that's a great player like Kinsey, you need to get him the ball in places where it's easier for him to score. And the block is the best place. Out to Kinsey. Looking to cut this game to one possession. Gibbs all over him. The shot clock winding down. And the tip from Kinsey just off. Wow. What an athletic play. Fluger. Outside, Gibbs on the drive. The floater's off. Rebounded by Prentice Hub. Keeps the possession alive. The point guard at the block. Irish standing right now. Hubs tipped. Back outside. Fluger gives it away. Here's Kinsey. Who pulls back now to the outside. West. The three ball from Brooks Harris in and out. And there is a whistle on the floor. Marshall with a ton of energy looking to get back in this game. They're within five. Where's the Take trampoline the right there? Wow, he is up. up there. Woo. The Irish still on top by five. Stick with us at Purcell Pavilion. Up, score, and stop. So you want to get two consecutive stops in a row and get a score in between. But the main thing is, you know, it's grind time. It's time for them to really step up and rebound well. I really give credit to Marshall. They're very, very long, and they are hard to rebound against because you have to get a body on them. Notre Dame has a scoring drought that's lasted in excess of four minutes. They've turned the ball over four times in that period as well. West closely defending Goodwin. It's Mooney who pulls up. That's short. Marshall comes away with it. Irish still struggling at the half court offense of getting under the groove, finding good looks, and knocking down threes has been a really issue for the Irish again here in the second half. Kinsey takes it, fades away, and he's got it. Now, here's the scary point if you're a coach. A young man hasn't played well the whole game. And now it comes down to the last 10 minutes, and you see that he wants the ball. A one possession game. Marshall has stormed all the way back in the midst of a 10 0 run. Mooney with the lay in. And yeah, here we go. The flop rule. rule. You know, this is very important. We're seeing this called early college basketball where they're just not allowing players to just go back like that. One warning from now on it'll be a technical. Darius George the offender for Marshall. Yeah that was a big time flop. And we're seeing this a lot at the NBA level and the collegiate level now. Oh yeah it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous that they're seeing this at the NBA. And it's trickled down. The drive in the reverse from Darius George. He may have been called for flopping on the other end, but he comes up with a reverse layup. Cardinal rule, don't give up the baseline, and the Irish did. Up to a wide open Mooney. He's got it! Boy, that's a big time basket by the senior. Wanting the ball. Wanting the ball in that situation. Comes up with a basket to cut it to a three-point game, and then it's John Mooney Following the reverse layup, Mooney's got 22 points and 12 rebounds led the way for the Irish. Nice find and the three ball on the finish. Yeah, that's again, that's what the doctor ordered. If you're Mike Bray and the coaching staff, you need to have big shots. Mooney has 22 of the team's 54 points. Up closely defending West. Notre Dame needs to get back to playing really solid half-court defense. Shot clock winding down. 
West pulls up. The three off the back rim, tipped. Hustle play from Goodwin. It's going to stay with the hurt. And there's the example that Coach Spray talked about. Getting both hands on the ball, rebounding strong, rather than just trying to tip it. In order to do that as a coach, you got to get bodies on the on the offensive man shooting, and then you got to go up strong and get the ball. Iron Bennett has been out for the last six minutes or so. He's now back in the game, has three personal fouls, but has played a massive role inside. I would look for the Irish to go right back to him. Three ball off the mark. Bennett's got the board and the foul. What a tremendous effort there by getting the loose ball. Again, the Irish refused to screen people out, which there you get inside, gets his hands on the ball, and finishes the opportunity now for a three-point play. Iron Bennett comes back in and makes an, an, an impact right away. Ten points and five boards for the redshirt sophomore out of Durham, North Carolina. Got a referee calling timeout here. Questions on the floor. I'm not sure what they're looking at right now, but it looks like they're talking about something with this scoreboard. Marshall is back within four. They can cut it back to one possession yet again if Bennett can sink the free throw. I just look at players and their 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 personalities and how they carry themselves. And right now you can just see a lot of confidence in the Marshall coaching staff and the players where right now the, the Irish are kind of struggling, kind of looking over their shoulder here. Bennett two for three on the season from the free throw line. In and out, and it looks like there's a violation against the Thundering Herd. Yeah, lane violation there. Got in a little bit too quick. Again, they're eager to go to the offensive boards, a little bit too eager that time. Looks like the call was on Marco Sharenitz. Double ball screen here. Refuses it. Mooney off the dribble. Can't get it to fall. An emphatic rebound by Bennett. Marshall looks to tighten it further. West the drive. In and out of his hands. Sharenic puts it up. Rebound. The follow. No. Still loose. Mooney grabs the board. Ahead to Gibbs. The tip. And the finish from Goodwin. Count it with the foul. Wow, that was all effort at both ends. John Mooney being relentless, getting the ball out on the outlet, and then a great take by the sophomore guard. What a bucket from Dane Goodwin. You're looking for contact. Yeah, you're looking for a spark, something to get the Irish crowd back in this game. Hey, that could be the turning point. Goodwin looking for the three-point play. Nails the free throw. Notre Dame up by seven. Boy, that was a big bucket there for Notre Dame. Jawan Durham and John Mooney both in the game looking to deal with Iron Bennett down low. Irish going to their 2-3 look here. Brooks Harris. Marshall content to swing it along the outside. Shot clock starting to wind down. West with three to shoot, fades away. That was awfully close. Rebounded by Kinsey, back up, and it's taken by Durham. The Irish extend the advantage back to seven. Dane Goodwin. On the pass from TJ Gibbs, Notre Dame. Reasons why he leads the Fighting Irish with 22 points and 13 rebounds. Looks like they're gonna pick up man to man here. Marshall picking up man to man. Gonna put a little bit more pressure on the Irish, see if they can get a quick turnover. 
full court press from the Thundering Herd. As a coach, this is when you design a play to get over half court. Yeah, you just got to clear out, let your point guard bring the ball up the floor, get right into your offense. Good win. Backing down. The spin move. Can't finish. And now a foul underneath. Great look. Just a really good look here. You know, I really think that this is his strength right now is with his back to the basket. Great spin move. Just didn't have enough spin on it. Off the glass and go in. Notre Dame has played a very clean game throughout. Just six fouls in the first 33 minutes of this contest. Now the Irish are going to have to know where the shooters are in this zone defense. Kinsey to the bucket. I really like what the herd does there. They put Kinsey right in the middle of the zone and he can get the basketball and use his athleticism to finish. Mia Berry was just in the last Marshall huddle. Let's see what she heard. Thank you, Austin, in that last huddle. Coach D'Antoni told his team, we are still in this game, but we have to defend. So he's making, he told his team make, to limit the offensive rebounds in our offense. Notre Dame's come out in a 2-3 defensive zone, so he drew up a couple plays to get the ball moving on that end. For Mike Bray, he told his team, I'm happy you guys are rebounding, but now we need to execute on offense, guys. You know, those are things, again, now it's the time when coaches really earn their keep because you've got to make adjustments now. Notre Dame's went more to his zone. Great inbounds pass. John Mooney couldn't finish on the reverse, but he'll shoot two. But more importantly, if the call goes right, I think the big guy just picked up foul number four. That is critical. Iron Bennett with four fouls in the last 642 of this contest. And now that we're getting towards those closing stages of the second half, there might come a point where you just can't take them out. Well, they're going to keep him out here to probably the three minute mark unless the game starts slipping away. But when the Irish have had him out of the game, they've really taken advantage of it. When Iron Bennett's in the game, Marshall has been outscored by just three points. On the other hand, fellow forward Jansen Williams. The Marshall Thundering Herd have been outscored by 15. John Mooney has a lot of confidence going inside against the Herd without the big guy. Outside, three ball from Karenic off the mark. Again, I felt uh, as you watched that possession, Marshall just didn't run their offense and they settled for really kind of a bad off balance three. Mooney from three, back rim. What a hustle play by Fluger. Gives a long three off. Fluger aboard, underneath. Mooney with the finish. The Mike senior. Bray animated on the sideline. The senior really stepped up with two great opportunities with loose balls, got his teammates the ball. Mooney with the steal. He's fouled on the way up. You know, what you want to see in your seniors is really a step up time. And here's a great example here. You know, stepping out, tipping the ball out, keeping it alive, just, you know, blue collar work, getting the ball back to his teammate with a finish. That's what you want to see your senior do. And that's what Rex did in that possession. What a finish from John Mooney. The extra effort after the initial board from Rex Fluger. So far from the line, John Mooney, 7 for 11 tonight. He's got 26 points. Front rim again. Coaching staff is for Marshall's looking and when they're going to try to make a decision on putting their big guy in the game. Taken away, TJ Gibbs. Can't finish, second try, not either. Pulls back out, fades away, and it's a Marshall rebound. It's a yeah. poor shot. Yeah, really good opportunity it's there for the Irish to kind of put this game with some margin, but just didn't get it done again. The length of Marshall's defenders really upset the Irish going to the rim. Backing down, it's Milanovic. Taken by Mooney. 
Uh, good. They've got to make a decision to get more presence inside on the block. We'll see if Marshall finally makes a substitution and we'll see if they can get the ball back down low. Underneath it's Fluger. The fine from Mooney. John Mooney bordering on a, a career high. He's got 26 points, the career high 27 for the big man. He said, senior, you pass to me, now I'll pass it back to you. Both great results. The fadeaway and the finish. Sharenitz. Yeah, here we go. We just see a great look inside. Senior passing to senior. You know, you got to get those little little passes inside and score. But again, there it goes and shows you John Mooney can do a lot of good things. And the Irish have struggled by screening people off. And again, there's a relentless by the herd of going to the offensive board. And now you have an opportunity to get a three-point play. Sharenitz. Closes the advantage to eight. Boy, these Marshall, Marshall Thundering Herd are out here competing big time tonight. Three try, I beg your pardon, a long two foot on the line from Mooney, but it's off anyway. Kinsey finds a lane, tries to dunk over John Mooney, but he's fouled on the way up. A little ambitious that time around. Yeah, and that was just a bad communication on the perimeter that no one switched out, allowed him to just go right to the rim. Again, poor communication allows this look, and you know, that's great athleticism, but I've seen that called offensive foul with that left hand kind of clearing John Mooney out. Kinsey will try to get this back within two possessions as he sinks the first. An 86% free throw shooter. Yeah, I really like him as an athlete. He's just going to continue to get better. As you think about his upside is he's going to continue to get stronger. He just can do a lot of things because he's gifted and talented athletically. Kinsey six foot five, but he nearly has a double double. 12 points and nine rebounds. This is where games are won and lost right now in the last four minutes. Every possession becomes very important. John Mooney. Outside it's Fluger. It's Goodwin who pops the three, hits the top of the backboard. Taken away by Goodwin. Mr. Second effort. Guess who gets his hands on the ball? He's been doing that all night. See a lot of similarities between Goodwin and Fluger with these scrappy second chance points. Let's see if the Irish get Bennett inside with four fouls. Mooney to the basket and the finish. Bennett's got four, so he doesn't guard. Is that a mistake for Bennett? Does he still have to guard? And you oh, know, if yeah. you accept that fifth yeah. foul, you yeah, just get you, it? You got to play through that. Bennett tips it, trying to tear that rebound. The Irish take it, they're up nine, and can run this clock down. Yeah. A lot of poise right now for Notre Dame, taking care of the basketball, running their sets. Mid-range jumper from Hubs off. Kinsey looks to run the floor. Tries to go baseline. Tipped off Mooney. John Mooney leading the way for Notre Dame. He's got 28. Notre Dame lead. They're back within nine. West pops the three. And he's got it. Back to a two-possession game for the herd and a quick Notre Dame timeout. Just a great set coming out. Looking for something out of bounds here. You see a double stagger screen. Then just kicking the ball out. Hand off. Step back. Three. Looks solid. As soon as he left his hands, you knew it was going in. Just a great read where he steps back. And again, he's got the big guy that used her a screener. That's a lot of that's a lot of territory to get around. West leads Marshall with 14 points. The leader for Notre Dame is John Mooney. He's got 28. It's a career high for the big man. His previous career high was set back on January the 12th against Boston College when he had 27 points. He's just done so many great things. You know, you look at the, 
you look at the stat sheet, and just see everything he's done well. But I always say, always say, Dane Goodwin has also contributed a lot in this ball game without scoring, just getting his hands on the ball, getting the extra opportunities. Luger with all kinds of time. It's all right on cue. It's Dane Goodwin, the bucket and the foul. I tell you, just relentless. Where the ball is, that's where he's been tonight. He's got all the 50-50 balls. He just fought that ball. Look at him as he takes the ball up strong here. And that's a key bucket for the Irish here with 2.18 left. And just as Marshall was starting to come back in this contest, Notre Dame responding with Dean Goodwin. He has really been a great spark for the Irish here in this ball game. You go back and watch film, you're going to see a lot of positive things that 23 has done for the Irish tonight. Marshall, do they have to now work a little bit more quickly, Coach? No, I think you're still in good shape. You just got to make sure you run your offense and get great looks, trying to get the ball to your scorers here. To the basket with a shot clock winding down the tip in from Tavion Kinsey. My word, can he jump and get up? He was up over everybody right there and had a great tip. Just for anybody that's going to be playing Marshall this year, you better screen them out because they're going to go hard to the offensive boards. They're long and they are athletic. TJ Gibbs. Trying to spin around a defender to the basket off the backboard. Tip free. Thundering herd. Give it to West. Just off. Had a great look. He had a great look. At some point, Marshall might have to consider fouling. They're going to play this possession out, but after that, yes, you're going to have to foul after this possession. It's a must stop for the third. Fluger to the outside. It's Goodwin. Just off. Taken by Bennett. Marshall's got to go quickly. Under a minute to go. Look for a three. Kinsey back to the outside. It's Williams. Air ball. And he's hearing it from this Notre Dame crowd. Yeah, great atmosphere here with the Irish needing stops in every possession. Again, a kind of a rush shot there on that three. Coach Dandy and Tony looking to make a couple of adjustments in the final seconds. Well, you got to get your quicker players in because you need a steal and a foul. And you got it. TJ Gibbs, the hard foul. Jared West unintentionally hit him that hard, but. Gibbs took quite a spill. Yeah, you know, that's just basketball. It was a basketball play. Both teams going hard, playing it for the basketball. But, you know, if you're thinking, Marshall, you've got to get your hands on the basketball. So you're going to play through people. You're going to bump them. And if you get called, it gets called. But if it doesn't, maybe you got a chance for a steal and stay in the game. It's a look at head coach for Notre Dame, Mike Bray. What is the mentality for the Irish here in the final seconds? You got to switch on everything, so you get no three. So meaning that someone sets the screen, everybody's going to switch. There's not going to be an opportunity for anybody to get a quick three. T.J. Gibbs hits the front end of the one and one. Let's look for a high ball screen for Marshall here. And then again, the Irish look to probably switch everything on the perimeter, keep everything in front of them, not allowing an easy three. Gibbs nails the first two free throws of the, of the night. Quick three ball from Brooks Harris. It's off. Gibbs grabs it. A foul against Jansen Williams. And Notre Dame will shoot two more, and they have started to pull away. There's just a fine line as a coach between winning and losing. And right now, as you saw the last two possessions by Marshall, they were rushed, rushed threes. Dan D'Antoni will likely have his squad fall to one and two, but this is not a bad loss at no, all. The not. other one to Toledo, who is an extremely strong squad as well. You know, this is uh, a, a great competitive, competitive game. 
you know, coach is going to learn a lot. His players are going to build off of that. And his whole model is we're going to get better every day and we're going to be really good when it comes to tournament time. TJ Gibbs nails the free throw. Kinsey will look to drive in the closing moments. Yeah, the coaching staff is going to take this with a very positive situation. Coming in here to Notre Dame with a very young team and being able to compete and actually had just a couple shots away from, you know, getting a win, stealing one. But then you have to give the Irish credit. They were able to come down, control the game. Mooney did an incredible job of getting on the boards and knocking down shots. So the combination, it's just a fine line between winning and losing. Notre Dame's experience won out tonight. The herd cut this to a one possession game at one point, but they have never led today. Biggest scoring run was a 10 0 run in the second half. They also had a 9 6, 19 6 run in the first. Got to see total denial here out of bounds. The Irish going to have to make good cuts and great reads to get open. You want to get the ball in bounds because then you know you're going to get fouled immediately. Inside. And the foul issued to Dane Goodwin. And that has to be the decision made by Marshall and the head coach Dandy and Tony start to foul now. Well, you have to. You have to. You don't have enough clock, so you've got it. Your only hope is that the Irish miss free throws. And, you know, so you've got to gamble. You've got to foul. And, uh, you know, stranger things have happened. You foul, they go down, hit threes. Then you, you might make a miracle happen. Dean Goodwin nails the front end of the one and one. Goodwin, a sophomore out of Upper Arlington, Massachusetts. He has done a great job tonight at both ends of the floor. As much as John Mooney's done so many great things, without the things that the sophomore guard has done, I don't think they get this win. Grabbed by Goodwin. I beg your pardon, that's Carmody who's fouled. Some boos start to rain down on the Marshall players. At some point, you have to lay off the foul. Yeah, but you know, you're a competitor. I don't blame them for that. You know, they had them in a trap. You're going for the ball. You're going to compete to the, the horn sounds. Uh, it wasn't a ridiculous foul. It was just a hustle foul. You just got to just, yeah, you just got to come here and play. So uh, that's part of the game. There's seven seconds. Play to the horn. Carmody's free throw rolls in and out. The Irish bring in some of their secondary players, including Chris Doherty and Elijah Morgan. Elijah Morgan, the walk on, playing in the final seven seconds of tonight's contest. I'm sure Coach Bray would have liked it to be a little larger lead, could have given him some more time. Marshall foul of 1.7. I believe that goes against Chris Doherty, who just entered the game. Yeah, you know, it used to be when you foul, you get your name in the scorebook. Well, he fouled, he got his name in the scorebook, because that was definitely a foul. That was a man's foul there. Took only seven seconds, but hey, you know. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's a sign that don't come in here. <laughs> don't come in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go strong, and I'm going to get either ball or you or both. And he did both. The next two games for the Fighting Irish will stay at home. They play Presbyterian. That's on November the 18th before playing Toledo on the 21st. The Irish walk away with a 10-point victory over Marshall. A big win for Notre Dame. They shot the ball relatively.